have some um, non copyright lo fi playing in the background. This stream is going under. Um, this stream is going to be going under. Um, how do I say? Um, uh, Scorch Media Criticism is on there for damage. I don't know why I have that. Um, I think that's sufficient because it's like gonna be more of a tank in my time. Um, this is gonna be more of a emotional journey. Um, it's where I be honest about myself and the things I've been through. Through um, and gain strength and vulnerability. I've always been someone that have trust issues in my life. Um, and to me, this is me getting everything out there so I can grow stronger from this experience. There's gonna be some mindless gameplay in the back, so yes, technically this is not just chatting, but I don't give a shit because I'm not doing this for that gameplay, I'm doing it to be archived so I can be out there. with because well I don't think I need to say why but if it will provide any different form of understanding this lo-fi is not gonna be okay this lo-fi is not the right mood okay all right Yes, chill. Non copyright. <laughs> chill lo fi. Um, that, that's. Do your stream of lo fi hip hop, NCM, non copyright chill study. Okay. Can I get like non. like bullshit? <laughs> I've been diagnosed with um, over the years have been um, PTSD, crippling depression, the autism spectrum disorder, ADHD, Asperger's, OCD, ODD, and among other things that are not as severe as those. 
episodes. That's probably the most severe of them. So those are all I'm going to go into for now. Um, so I'm just going to basically give out my life story for all public eyes to see. Because for me, that is what I need to do to gain some level of clarity. So the first thing is, is that Quite frankly, when I was four years old, I was diagnosed with the autism spectrum disorder. And at the same time that happened is when my shit fuck of a father um, left my mother in a single parent position because of, well, assumedly, Throughout the years, he's provided many troubles, but we're just going to go in order. He'll come back up again. But under the alias of Shay. <sighs> it's very hard for me, so if I stutter, my apologies. I also barely got any sleep last night. But I knew that I needed to put this out there, so for myself and choose to associate myself with. Anyway, that's what happened at the age of four. Um, I never really fit in at school at all. There's a number of things due to the whole, you know, autism spectrum disorder to say the least. Just the whole social awkwardness of that, not knowing how to really approach social situations. It was always hard for me to, well, cope with, as you can imagine. But it never really was a problem until third grade, um, which we'll get to. But sorry if I sound scattered. It's just I really didn't prepare a script for this. Um, I don't even know I was expecting to do it. Anyway. What I was going to say is, from around the age of from when I was, of course, in kindergarten to around fourth, it was third grade, when I moved schools, I was in a school known as Lemoyne. Um, I probably shouldn't say that shit. Um, and quite frankly, um, I really didn't fit in there at all for obvious reasons like my autism but we ended up moving and a war was always raging at home to be quite frank with you um because of my mom being a single mother and all that and of course it being hard for her we would always fight at home even through the ages of Kindergarten to well, third grade. When it was third grade, I ended up switching schools to another school in my other school district since I did, in fact, move. Which, as you can imagine, was hard for me and my mother. But um, it was even harder when, in all actuality, that's when most of my problems started. Because due to said autism, I was brutally bullied from around third grade to eighth grade. This um, ranged on to verbal, to at some points physical abuse. Due to my school's system, they didn't ever really do anything to fuck about it, this might make it worse. Quite frankly, um, there really needs to be learned from this. I hope that like the education system can somewhat fucking not as shit as it fucking is now because it's god awful in terms of handling bullying and its effects on kids. At least from my school's perspective. But 
anyway, of course, um, the verbal abuse just was always a constant, um, and said stress started to carry on to my home life, where me and my mom's situation was already quite fucking volatile, and, well, let's just say it got even more volatile, because of the stress of said emotional abuse at school carrying over to my, um, home life, um, you know, would always just be us screaming at each other at home, which led to very volatile situations, where at that point we were just very verbally abusive to each other. Um, so, I've never really had any real life friends, to say the least, which is why video games make so much to me. But, um, and yes, I understand this is scatterbrained as fuck, but I am tired of shit, and that's all I have about that, but I need to stop addressing it scatterbrained and get on with it. I'm clearly stalling. Anyway. From about, to when it hit around 6th grade is when the verbal abuse got really, 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 really fucking bad, because of course, middle school, all that shit, kids are starting to learn swear words, which also made my home situation that much fucking worse, because it was no longer just me calling my mom a stoopy head, but it was more of me calling her a fucking cunt. Don't worry, me and my mom's situation since then has gotten a lot better, but that's not what we're nerving out about. Um, um, but the um, emotional abuse that I did face during that time was absolutely fucking terrible, to say the least. And the way my school handled it was just even worse. My school did this horrible fucking thing where basically what they would decide to fucking do is they would take kids. It's like, you know how you have like New York State exams, all that shit, right? This is a true story. They would take things over to um, the assembly room, right? And I kid you fucking not, they would call out kids' names and grades and have them stand the fuck up. So, by the way, despite my social ineptitude, I was a pretty smart fucking kid. So, um, imagine being very socially awkward but at the same time, getting the target painted on your back of being one of the few five people who stand up when they say, New York State exam, A, A, A's, A plus, all that. And then also having your name on the walls when it says high honor roll. As you can imagine, that placed a giant fucking target on my back, basically screaming, hi, bully me. It wasn't at all. Pleasant. And I was, quite frankly, bullied a lot worse because of their systems of basically, instead of publicly putting up kids that are doing well, or telling kids to get better, doing it in front of literally fucking everybody, which is uh, shameable, and I hope that like, someone never has to fucking go through that, because it is fucking terrible to be put on a pedestal when you're already in a very, very, very shitty fucking situation yourself socially. Because it basically just tells everyone to fucking hate you. And that's what happened. I had no friends at school to the point where even the new kids, I'd, have, I'd be like friends with them for a day. And then they'd realize that the popular thing to do, the safe thing to do, was to fucking shit on me. And it'd go from one day to being like, oh, we're friends, to you're a fucking little shit, a stupid idiot, go fucking kill yourself, shit like this, you're retarded, um, horrible words, quite frank, and because of that, of course, my home situation got even worse, um, at this point, I was eating lunch in the school counselor's room, and also changing in a different changing room for gym because one of the kids uh, fucking 
nearly damn waterboarded me in the water fountain. So yeah, at this point, the abuse was turning physical. It was fucking terrifying. Um, the only place for me that would have been safe was quite frankly home, and well, a war was raging on there as well. So, let's just say nothing was really going well for me at this point in my life. I had no escape, nothing. I quite frankly wanted to die. Um, of course, this led me to believe that there was something wrong with me. Extremely. Um, these questions are, of course, horrible for someone in, like, sixth grade to be fucking asking themselves. But, you know, it's life. <laughs> um, of course, that's when the crippling depression started kicking in and all that with the whole existential crisis. But, um, yeah. I was just physically abused in that place and verbally abused by all the kids and quite frankly my school had another frowned upon system that I think should never be fucking reenacted if ever it is possible for it not to be where fun fact they would do witnesses on kids who reported being bullied so what happens do you think if a kid reports being bullied right but to uphold their their um how do I say rules the school can't really punish the kid because all the witnesses came forth also fucking hate the kid that was being bullied. So what do you think happens then? Well, nothing gets done about it. And the kid who accused them gets put into fucking detention. Despite, and the only time, by the way, the other kids went to detention is when there was literal camera evidence of this happening. Despite the clear and obvious mental effects of the abuse taking a toll on me and the fact that I had no reason to lie about this at the time, nor was sm socially smart enough to come up with this ploy to get other kids in trouble that I don't like, to be quite frank. Book smart, street fucking stupid when it came to me at the time. So... What happened is, around 7th grade, I was spending almost every day in detention due to this blatantly corrupt system that they put forth. Of course, that led me to hate the detention teacher just as much, and it led to horrible mental effects at home to the point where the verbal abuse was getting so bad, my mother was starting to have to call the cops to get me to basically get scared and shut the fuck up. Um, so around, you know, every like two weeks, there'd be cops in my house, and every day I was getting bullied, and every day my mom were basically yelling at each other to some fucking degree. My only savior at this time in my fucking life was the online world, which... To you, my friends, who sit here and wonder why I spend so much time on video games, it is because, if anything I'm dependent on, it is escapism. I'm an addict to that shit, like it's my fucking drug. I hate reality because of how much it has, quite frankly, been an absolute fucking disappointment to me. Um, so, at the time I was given a console, right? It was the console I'm actually playing this game on now, the Xbox One S. It was for Christmas by my mom's, well, boyfriend at the time. He was trying to, of course, warm up to me. He did the right play. Um, but that's when I found a game known as Destiny, and when my life started to take a turn for the better. While I was playing Destiny, I met my first ever friends. I still know some of them to this fucking day. One of them I consider to be quite frankly my brother, and I talk to him every day. He is some of the biggest family I have ever had. He's a lovable soul, and I love him to death. No homo, if he ever sees this. But to 
guys will know what I'm talking about. I... If I, I remember the situation correctly. I was patrolling on Mars. On Destiny. And I was using an exotic gun that apparently he didn't have. And he messaged me. And said, hey, how do I get that gun? I like helping people. Whether or not people have disappointed me. That's what I found out about myself in this situation. I told him, you know what? I'll help you. Get it. I know how to get it. It's like, alright, sweet. He invited me to a party. I did not have a mic at the time, so I was sitting there party chatting. He sat there and talked to me. He was kind. Um, the kindest person I met. And, to be quite frankly, he's why I bought a mic. One of the happiest days of that year was when I logged on to, um, Xbox, and I messaged him, I said, yo, I finally have a mic, he invited me to a party in seconds, and we talked for hours and hours and hours on end, killing strike bosses. It was amazing. He accepted me for who I was, not who I could be, or... Um, when I'm not. He just accepted me for who I am in the moment. And that is something, a lesson that I have carried on with me for all this time. That no matter what situation is, I will treat someone as they are in the moment, not what they could be, and not what they were, who they are now. Through, like, making Destiny private matches, of course, I was getting confident boosts, and, um, I was meeting new people through making LFG posts on Xbox. Um, six people, quite frankly, come to my mind. One of them, of course, being Beast. Okay. Just kind of drop part of his Xbox name, because, but, um, that was the guy who I met on the Mars Patrol. My brother right there, man. But um, another thing that happened was I met five other people besides him. Who I consider to be my extended family. I know blood is thicker than water, but... <laughs> Humans are 75% composed of water, so to ignore that as well is stupid. If that logic makes any fucking sense. Um, we considered each other to be brothers, um, we were a family. <sighs> At around 8th grade, the abuse was getting terrible at school. My only calming mechanism was the fact of the escapism, which didn't really help my, um, situation at home because, well, what are you going to do as a mother when you see your kid disbehaving? You're going to take away something he really likes. So what did my mom take away? Well, the video games. What was my one coping mechanism? Well, the video games. So what did that cause us to do? Scream at each other a lot more and quite frankly made our home situation a lot more volatile, even if it made my emotional state a little bit better because Quite frankly, I hated losing the accessibility to escape the freedom I got from it and the people I met that I considered to be my only friends. To this day, I still barely have any IRL friends. I think I've, well, I have met one. Um, we now mo mostly commute over online, but we met in, um, I'll get to it. But, um, that was when I was in 12th grade, when I finally met my first IRL friend. So to put that in perspective, that is a lot of time alone and scared. Um, what ended up happening is the cops were getting called more frequently because of the situation at home being as bad as it was. Um, 
and the school situation, of course, getting even worse, which caused more stress at home. While I was pressured to keep good grades because I was a straight A student, it was a horrible mix, a terrible, god awful fucking mix of a shit show. So, um, where did it go from here? Around 8th grade, the abuse got so fucking bad that I straight up decided one day when I was in the detention that I didn't want out of the school. And complete honesty here, what I did was some of the most ballsy shit I've ever done and the stupidest. But at the same time, what else was I supposed to do in that situation? I was in the detention and I was mentally done. It was to the point where my mind was quite frankly broke. I was so fucking mentally just done and tired that probably at that point, despite the escapism, because I was almost losing it every other day, I just wanted to die. I looked at my detention teacher with a straight face and I deadass told her, because we were arguing, I fucking hated her. And I was in detention almost every day due to this whole false reporting thing. There was no false reports. And the principal knew this, yet they had to uphold their rules. Whatever. Such a broken fucking system. But, um, I hope no kid ever has to go through it. And I hope that system is 100% completely and utterly fucking replaced for a better one. Because that was just blatantly abusive. Because the school therapist already knew that this was happening. Was the school's embedded rules. Bullshit like that. PR speech. There's no excuse for what happened. You shouldn't do. But anyway. Lighter terms. And I do look on this with fond memories. Because quite frankly. I view this as one of my smarter decisions. If you would like to know what I did. Well here's the obvious. I looked at the detention teacher after a long winded argument with her. And I straight up told her. I am going to shit in your fucking sink. They had a bathroom in that room, you know. And I deadass told her, I'm going to shit in your fucking sink. That's what I'm going to do. Why did I do that? Well, because quite frankly, my rep was already bad. We get detention all the time, and I knew this would get me expelled. Was I right? Fuck yes, I was. Am I happy I was right? More than ever, because it got me out of that shitty situation. got me quite far away from it by getting me expelled and arrested because what did I do after she said oh you won't fucking do it called me a coward you know what I did I looked her in the eyes I went to the bathroom and I shat in her fucking sink which got me promptly expelled which caused a giant fucking argument at home which then led to, of course, me getting arrested. Because at this point, the cops were at my house on a weekly basis, and they were done with my shit, so I got arrested and moved to a mental hospital. Which was terrifying to me at the time of only 8th grade. And, uh, um, yeah, that fucking happened. So, imagine uh, how I felt. Feeling alone without the ability to go and escape, I was fucking terrified. Cried almost every night while I was there. Mental institutions are fucking horrible, by the way. But, um... Anyway. That's not the point. I'm not talking about what I'd like to fix with the mental institutions. I was there for two months. I was over the home and on the weekends. When I was on the weekends, I talked course with the people like your brothers I never told them that this was going on because I was afraid that they would judge me cripplingly terrified they never knew one of the reasons why I'm getting this out now so they know what I was going through I was on during the week and it wasn't because I was busy at school it's because I was breaking down um, at this point the relationship between my mom and I was a damaged shitty fucking mess I, of course, blamed her for 
calling the cops on me at the time. And though, if I was in her situation, I don't know quite frankly what I would have done as well. And she felt shit enough for doing it herself already. So, at this point, no, I don't blame her. Although at the time I did. Which only led to a worse situation between her and I. Of course. So. After this two month break where they're fucking with my medication. And by the way, yes, in said facility I was also physically abused. Which was great. It was, got my ass kicked by people three times the fucking size of little skinny fucking me. Curled up in a ball as they were punching me. People and the staff at the facility is trying to get them fucking off of me. Of course, this was very damaging to me. Of course, traumatic even, one of the reasons why I do have PTSD. Um, and by the way, while this was all going on, my school was trying to find me in their school to be in because, you know, I shit in a sink. Oh, and by the way, the principal that I fucking hate, she had to pick up my shit. Because <laughs> the janitor was off duty. The fucking bitch deserved it. So the shit she put me through, I put her through some literal shit. Of course, this was not the story over for my torment, because life had other plans for me. Plans that would, quite frankly, break me down. But you know, that's fucking life. Of course, uh, me, the kid who got bullied most of his life, can never get it easy. What a shame that would be. As you can see, my resent for life is clearly fucking showing. This all turned into, of course, a shit show at home once I finally got, um, released in the home. Where, of course, I already blamed my mom for all this bullshit. Which was unfair to her at the time, admittedly. And I'm sorry, Mom. That was wrong of me. I know you've heard it before, but I doubt you'll even see this, but... I'm sorry. Um. Anyway. <laughs> the other issue here was about two weeks after I was released home, I was not going to school because they didn't give me a new school yet. I was sent to another mental hospital for about a month. Because the situation at home sparked up again. Cops were called. Tracked off to the cop car in handcuffs, kicking and screaming, and well, that's all she wrote. Another month of physical and mental degrading bullshit. And well, I went to another school after that. If you'd like to know if the situation changed from me getting bullied at all, well, no, it didn't at all. Quite frankly, the situation was just not physical, but was definitely verbal. At this point, I was completely damaged and suffered from multiple crippling diagnoses. My medication was in fucking scrambles as well, which didn't really help. But, um... Conversation at hand. Stayed about in that school for three months and 
the student home sparked up again, and this time I was put in a facility about... <sighs> road, so... A good while away from my home, about... Six hours away. Or... Six months. Half a year. I missed out on holidays with my family. Missed out on talking to my friends. I couldn't even visit them for six months. Of course, the excuses I made were abundant. It was painful. Um, it hurt me a lot. To say the least. <laughs> not being there, not having them there by my side. They accepted me with open arms when I came back, but that didn't change the pain I felt. This experience is tra traumatic. They had like isolation rooms and all that for misbehaving kids. So if you freaked out, you go into the little chamber, and it's basically like a mini scream thing. Your screams are involved in that bitch. Fucking traumatizing, but no kid should ever have to go through what I've been through, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna give a TLDR, because quite frankly, the situation doesn't change for a while. Um, my situation at home only grew worse, and throughout my um, life at this time, I switched through three separate schools, not counting the two original, and it's bullying more and more, the situation at work, home got worse, and I went to seven separate mental hospitals. Um, until my last one, which was, well, known as Hillside. Now, if that name comes familiar to you, it's because you've been involved in the mental health sphere. And in fact, a few weeks after I left that place, it was shut down for mistreat of patients and a lot of abuse. Some sexual, none that I was involved in, don't worry. But others physical, I was involved in that. I was physically abused by some staff. How long was I there? That was... I need to turn off my notifications. That was... Six... Oh. That. that was two years of my life. Around 16 to 18. That was my life in a mental institution, a what they would call a long-term placement scenario. I would get weekend home visits where I'd hang out with the fam, aka the boys I played Destiny with, and uh, my mom, which during those weekends, quite frankly, we argued a lot. I wouldn't come out of my room, refuse to talk to her, because when we did talk, well, we just screamed at each other. not far off from the truth, it's the exact truth, to the point where around a year and a half into my payment at that facility, I started living with my grandmother on the weekend home visits, because the situation was so bad at home that it was just not safe for us. Sometimes the cops were called during weekend home visits. It was mostly me just blaming her for all the shit that happened, and her not knowing what to do with me. Because, well, our relationship at that time was a fucking shit show. To put it lightly. <sighs> at that point, I was quite sure we hated each other. What made the situation even worse is about a year into my, well, I call it containment, that's why I'm not the best word, my stay there. It's more or less a containment, but, um, 
I found a girlfriend. My first love. Hi, what up, bitch she was. She's a friend of mine, one of my six best, fr best friends, brothers. Had her and we became friends quickly and we started talking. Mind you, this was still on home visits. She didn't know about it. I didn't tell her. It was just always, oh, I'm busy at school, you know, all the time, studying. Gotta keep straight A's. It was a lie, of course, but what ended up happening is, well, we fell in love. Friends to lovers. She was so troubled mind like mine, which, quite frankly, may be why I felt comfortable talking to her. Well, quite frankly, that was the same with most of my friends. They were all social outcasts. Outside a beast. But he's special in his own right. Love you, man. Um, anyway, once again, Instagram brain. Got around two hours of sleep last night, none of it deep, and two hours is a definitely buffed estimation. But, um, this is not coming out the way I wanted it to, but it's at least coming out honest. for about a long ass while to the point where by the time we stopped dating I was already out in a new school but at this point I was in 12th fucking grade um, we dated for about a year it's 12th grade now and yes so most of my literally all of my 9th and 11th grade were spent said long-term facility, which was a long-term place facility, which was called Hillside, which was also, by the way, shut the fuck down. For being horrible, god-awful, and deplorable. And straight up abusive to its clients. Or residents, as you would call them. Quite frankly, picture a long-term facility as a long-term hotel that you never wanted to fucking go to. Because that's what it is. You have a room, and you stay there, and they fuck around with your medication, and you talk to a bunch of people you don't want to talk to that don't fucking know you. Side of a paycheck. We were detained with other kids as well. Each, um, you know, I guess you could call them sections of it, had around six to eight children in it. It would give education. It was terrible, by the way. Um, education was horrible. Anyway. What ended up happening is I was on good behavior long enough to, of course, finally um, help release. Let's get paid for my mom and all that. Um, and of course our situation at home was still fucking bad, but was nowhere near as bad as it was back then. And at this next school I was in, I was not bullied, by the way. For one year of school, quite frankly, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, Back onto the girl. Because this is a big part of something that caused me a damn well mental trauma. Turns out she was schizophrenic. Tried to help her with this to the best of my ability. I was always a support pillar in our friend group, despite going through the most shit. So, I always try to help her, be there for her, and her smile and all that. Well, one day, the. Um, let's just say. 
or raging home got too bad. Grandma was yelling at my grandma. We were arguing, and I was also on the, having a dispute with my friends, and she was in, in in the conversation as well. And I lashed out at her. This led to her breaking up with me. emotional clarity and honesty what I told to her I don't blame her because what I quite frankly said was words that I will never utter again to someone that I loved and that was can you just shut the fuck up because we not not by the way I'm gonna explain this because that was not just can you shut the fuck up we were arguing as well because she was involved in this friend's dispute, so. On top of the yelling with my grandma in the middle of the party, I basically lashed out at both of my friend and her and said, can all of you shut the fuck up and go kill yourself? Because it wouldn't make it easier for me. I regret those words with every fiber of my being. It was a coward's phrase, and I hate it. Of course, at the time, I didn't see myself to blame. To me, I was in the right because everyone was attacking me from my perspective and I lashed out. Was that the wrong perspective? Part of me wants to say a lot of people in my, in my position would have lashed out because of everything going on in their life. But at the same time, it does not excuse the deplorable thing that I said. He broke up with me, and my heart was broken. Because for once in my life, I felt, well, safe in someone's arms, and that all disappeared to me in an instant. This was the first time that I figured out why I felt so shit that in a crowd of people, I myself felt alone. This is the closest, by the way, after this breakup, the closest I have ever gotten to genuinely committing suicide. Because after the situation, by the way, she did something equally as deplorable. She struck my hopes along. Like a devil bitch. Even my friends at the time who knew I did something wrong agreed that what she did was fucking deplorable. Because what she fucking did was seven separate times come back and lie to me, saying that she'd give me another chance just for an hour later to, well, say it was bullshit. And of course, every time I fell for it because, well, I wanted that back, I desired that, and more than anything, that is something I wanted, I wanted her back, even if I knew at the time it wasn't healthy for me, because, well, in those moments in your life, you're not thinking, are you, about what's best for you, you just want that person back. had a phase of extreme codependency, to say the least. Where I was, to say the honest thing, desperate to find companionship. After the seventh time she lied to me, struck my hopes up, getting my hopes up, and to just, well, quite frankly, strike them the fuck down. for this? Yes. No reason I hate her is because she also caused my friend group to go into a rapid decline after she decided to sleep around in the friend group with the original friend who introduced me to her, which is someone I knew for six years and considered a brother, and of course at this time I felt 
fucking betrayed. Our relationship since then has really not been the same. And I hope one day I can make it up to him and we can make it up. And we can find peace with each other again. Because I miss him. If he ever sees this, he knows I'm talking about him. And man, I miss you. You are a brother to me. And losing him, honestly, I can't tell what was more impactful. Losing her or losing him. And I think, honestly, looking back on it, it was losing him. Because I miss him to this day. Do I miss her? No, because she, she fucked up with what she did to me. After that, the whole lying and deceit and all that, of course, being just genuinely fucked up. Instead of blatantly being crude, that you ever gone to a broken heart, you know how well, how hard it is to be struck along, especially when you're desperate like that. So that was my first heartbreak, and this is when I started getting a distrust in therapy. Because at the time, during one of the times that she was lying to me, I was in the school counselor's office in 12th grade. You know, um, explaining my distress, trying to give some genuine trust to someone. And I explained that I have no intent to kill myself, but right now, sometimes I feel as though dying Now mind you, if I was to kill myself, I would have fucking done that shit already. Because I, to me, have definitely at the time with all the bullying, was probably been through worse. I was going through worse. What? Sure, at this time, I guess you could say it was just doing its fucking job. But for me, it sowed so much distrust in me. Because what he did was he called the cops. And I got detained in a, another, my last, short-term placement mental facility. In which they thought I was, of course, suicidal. I tested to not be fucking suicidal because I had no interest in killing myself. I just said that I expressed a feeling of despair in which I felt like death might be an escape. But would I take that? No, because I expressed openly that I felt like suicide was a coward's way out. And that it would be straight up fucking against everything I stand for, assuming that I had morals in this low place, to kill myself. And that I refused to do that. I came back and I hated this therapist, by the way. That was in the same school. Two weeks in another scarring mental facility. Where I got to sleep in another bed that was not my own with my friends. Because why? Because I, quite frankly, expressed a reasonable amount of despair for the situation I was in. Yes, sure, you could say he was just doing his job, but if your job is to do that, then don't do your fucking job. get that sometimes kids can actually be suicidal, but if someone is genuinely telling you that you know, despite these feelings, they are conscious enough to not make that mistake, don't fuck over their trust issues. It's such a fucked up position to put a kid in. Because with what I was going through, it was not abnormal to want that. that mistake again, ever talking is one of my issues. One of the main reasons why I've kept secret now until this day about the shit I've gone through. Looks up. They've dealt me a horrible hand, but what was I to do about it? Complaining wouldn't have gotten me anywhere. So,
after I broke up with this girl, after, of course, the mental facility, which then the breakup was obviously solidified, she couldn't really contact me anymore. Despite me still trying to, at that point, lying to myself, saying there was still a chance, there wasn't. Um, came back to really shattered friend group because of what my other friend dated her and it was not okay. And he admits at the time that was not his right decision. Everyone else thinks it wasn't his right decision. But I think I also could have handled it better. But the situation is definitely broken now. I just hope one day I can make amends for how I handled it. We can be friends again. But anyway. So this situation, as you can tell, is fucking terrible. Because what it led me with was a feeling of codependency, which led me into a horrible, horrible situation in which I dated about 20 separate girls in the span of a year. Most of them confessed to me. I actually never confessed to any of them. Um... And that was because of this feeling of codependency, this feeling of longing and wants. When I was desperate, I was searching. Which is where my philosophy of, well, the well nourished philosophy that a lot of people believe in is if you're looking for something, you're not going to fucking find it. A lot of these relationships only lasted a week because I would break up because, quite frankly, they would say the words like, I love you in like a fucking week's time or a day or two where they barely fucking knew me. And to me, that was an immediate red flag, despite even my desperate attempts of wanting love, I still had some level of sensibility. Even at the time, if that sensibility was minimal or thin stretched, it was sensible enough. But. <sighs> anyway. How the situation basically ended up going and. What ended this codependency streak is when I met probably the second love of my life. Sweet girl to start. Turns out she was hiding the fact that she was schizophrenic to me. Yes, the second schizophrenic I've dated. And trust me, during that year I dated a fucking and someone with MPD for two months as well that was hiding that from me as well. You can imagine how good these fucking pickers were, right? They were great. Anyway, enough about that. What ended up happening with this girl as we dated for about six months. I fell in love. They were in love with me. And turns out they were hiding schizophrenia from me, which led to trust issues in said relationship, which did not bode well for us. And how the relationship ended is this bitch faked her suicide. Which, yes, at the time also snapped me out of what I was going through, caused me great trauma. Because at that time, I was also obsessed nearly with helping people. I, I still am. I love helping people. So at that time, her killing herself, I thought I was worthless. I thought I was powerless. Um, I couldn't help her even despite my love for her. I felt worthless. This led to many life-changing moments where I stopped dating, of course. I let people find me instead of me looking. For all the good things that came with this, there was an equal or more amount of terrible things, like a lot more PTSD. Because, of course, losing someone like that is going to be fucking traumatic to you. And by the way, I only found out that it was fake three days ago when the guilt welled up inside said person and they decided to message me, saying that it was fake and that they're sorry and that they want to make amends. I still don't know whether I should trust them or not and make amends with them. I'm leaning towards no. Don't worry. I'm trying to make a smart decision. <laughs> I 
but yes, most of my teenage years were spent in mental institutions, in and out of mental institutions, in and out of different schools, being bullied, and quite frankly, missing out on a lot of family moments that I wish I was a part of. Missing out on being a kid. Something I wish no kid had to go through. Graduated with a Regents diploma. And moved out of my mom's house and our relationship started getting better. Thankfully now, we're at a point where our relationship is fully repaired and we have a good mother and son bond. That's amazing. But what also happened this year is I almost lost my, my mom to a traumatic brain injury where she fell down the stairs and suffered internal hemorrhaging in her brain. That to me was extremely traumatic. Of course, it was near the same time where still around six months after this girl faked suicide, I was still going through all that shit. And uh, to me, it was very traumatic. Of course, some of my closest friends knew this happened because I just broke down um, talking to them about it. She's still suffering with said brain injury, going through amnesia. Of course, now I'm terrified that she's going to forget me. God forbid, but... All I can do now is be there for her. Be, be there for her. Be a good son. And thank her for not giving up on me. Quite frankly, God knows there's a million mothers out there that would have given up on me. Back on track, I kind of skipped ahead of you. Stay at home, start improving. Although at this point, I lost most of my original friend group. Five of them to be exact, the only one with me, Beast. The first friend I ever made. If I'm being honest with myself. I started rebuilding a relationship with them, but one of them I lost to a battle with their mental health. An actual suicide not faked. If I remember correctly, it got so bad where he was gambling. Um, I joined a call once and it was so depressing. He had a bunch of weed brownies and normal brownies mixed in a bag. And he said, oh, let's play a game. I said, what type of game? He said, I'm going to start rolling this dice and if it hits three to six, I'll play a normal brownie. If it's one to three, I'll hit weed brownie. He just kept rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling until the bag was empty. He just wanted that high. And one day, the high got him. He tried heroin. And I lost him to drugs. Poor bastard. I lost two other friends because of the one friend who dated my um, ex, and they, the two other friends were more close to him. I lost them. And the other friend made him butted heads a lot, like <laughs> shitty sibling rivalries. We laugh at it now, but we're getting closer. Started talking again, and thankfully I had his back. Great bat, great man. Got married, he's having twins. Love him to death. Die for that. I mean that. I'd gladly take a bullet for everyone who's been there for me throughout the years and accepted me for who I am. Of course, as all people do, I've dealt with betrayal, heartbreak. Um, betrayal, 
heartbreak, losing friends, losing family, um, hating myself for all of it, um, blaming myself, doubting myself. Um, it came to the point where I didn't want to blame other people and I just blamed myself. And I don't want to do that anymore because some people, even when they say, hey, this is my fault, I'll still sit here and I'll blame myself for it. I think saying that something's wrong, um, like saying that I did something wrong to me, is a lot easier than accepting that somebody wanted to hurt me. Of course, that's where I've developed my philosophy of that I hate hypocrites, I hate people who talk shit behind my back, and I hate liars. I'd rather have someone talk shit to my face, because I'm now strong enough to take it. It's not like I haven't heard it before, that somebody talks shit behind my back. So much so, I'm gonna go on like, um, kind of like a tangent, just admitting shit that I've done that I regret. Um, I went through a period in my life where after that breakup, I started using sex as a coping mechanism. Hardcore kinks, shit like master slash slave, shit like that. Had kinks, all that shit. I don't know why, but sex to me was... Addiction. I got addicted to it. I'm disgusted by myself when that now. And I've completely moved past that part of my life. I fell back into that addiction only once and I quickly pulled myself out of it. And I've, of course, blocked and unfriended all of my enablers for that addiction. Sex is not a good coping mechanism. Um, neither is any unhealthy coping self-harm or drugs and shit like that. Sex to me, I felt like I was pathetic. I felt disgusted with myself. I hated myself. <sighs> Took me about two months to break out of that first addiction and about a week break out of the next one. Um, only one person knows that I've had this problem. Thank you for accepting me for who I am. And looking past that, you know who this is if you're watching this because you would have been the only one to hear about this beforehand. I, well, this is a really dumb one, but it's still something I regret. I had a great grandma, I had of course, because she passed away, but she wanted me to kiss her, and as a four-year-old autistic with, of course, sensory issues of overstimulation, I did not want to do that, because, oh, she was wrinkly, she ended up passing away. And since I was six, I had enough emotional maturity, I guess, to apparently regret that. And I still do. I wish that I just puckered up my fucking lips and kissed my great-grandma on the cheek, instead of just always hugging her while moving my face away from hers, showing clear and obvious disgust through my lack of absolute social skills. That was probably one of the first times I realized that time is as precious as it is. I regret that, yes. Um, I don't believe in an afterlife. I'm an atheist because, quite frankly, there was a god. I don't think I would have gone through half the shit I've gone through because I've helped a lot of people. I've dealt most of these battles on my own. I'm a 
but um, if I'm wrong by some freak chance and there is a god out there and Grey Crema, you're looking down at me from the heavens, I'm sorry. And if God forbid I make it to the same afterlife as you, I will give you all the kisses you was out. Sorry. No matter how wrinkly your skin is, it's aged like a crocodile. I don't care. I'm sorry. You're a great person. Anyone I've ever heard, if there are people out there, I'm sure of it. <sighs> My controller just died. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sure whatever I did, I blamed you for at the time, and quite frankly, it was probably my fault. But the people who have hurt me, they damn well know it's your fault. Watch your fucking ass, bitch. They got people on my back. They're about as sick of your shit as I am. You know, say what you will to me, but talk shit about my friends, I'll clap back in an instant. Those are my friends, those are my fucking lifeline right there. Throughout my life, I've suffered a great deal of losses, very minimal gains, and if I did have a gain, it never came easy. The one thing I've had a gain for is due to my autism spectrum disorder, and it's the only thing that's ever come easy for me in life. Due to my autism spectrum disorder, there's a plan called, um, how is it called? It's something like Simple Living, or I forget its fucking name, but thank you to them. Due to my autism spectrum disorder, um, apparently I basically get a very hefty disability, um, let's just say buff, I guess. And that's the reason why I'm currently living alone, and why my situation with my mom has improved due to such. Because they paid for my apartment, still are. Still working to get a job and all that shit and become a better human being. Learn from my mistakes, my faults, shit like that. I'm always improving. But the reason why I wanted to post this and get everything out there, everything I've been through in life, for two reasons. The one thing is to spread the message and never give up no matter what the fuck you're going through. There are plenty of times when I sat there and thought giving up might be so fucking easy, but if I fucking did, if I did, so help me God, the people I would have hurt in the process would not have been worth it. I would not have the memories I had now. And the other reason is... Well, I guess there's three. So people who I have talked to and have decided to, of course, hurt me can stop using shit I've told them in confidence as an insult. Because now it's public fucking information, cunts. So, get off my ass. Can't release any info about me that isn't already known. 
course, these are disgusting people who have been making these threats. Or at individuals. That would like to take advantage of me. And my over-willingness to help people, despite them fucking me over. And the other reason is, is to gain some level of clarity through emotional vulnerability. I want this to be out there. Because to me, this is like me breaking three, free from my chains. Breaking free from the things I've dealt with in my past. Breaking free. Freedom. Something that I haven't really had because no matter who knows me, they never really know what I've been through. Um, and that does make me feel alone. So I guess putting this out there as public information helps me in that feeling of aloneness. And it helps me break free from the chains which in the past that I frown on myself for being in a mental hospital. I'm still ashamed of myself for that, despite me really not having much control over that. But I really just... Alright. But... Now, what's to be ashamed about? It's public information. Everyone fucking knows it. So what am I to be ashamed about? I know that me being ashamed about it was stupid to begin with, but this is a way of helping me, I guess, cope with that, that stupidity. That self-hate, that self-doubt, the lack of self-worth. Get everything out in the open on what I've been through, despite how hard this was for me, how tired I was, how god-awful I did not want to wake up in the morning and fucking do this, to me, shows progress in myself. Because no matter how much I've been able to help people, God knows I've been making minimalist strides in actually helping myself. So, this is me saying I'm working on it. And to those who have helped me in the past, you're not forgotten. And I remember you every single day of my life as someone who's made a positive impact on my life. On someone who has, quite frankly, saved me. So thank you. For everything. If it wasn't for you, God knows where I'd be. To all of you who said I shouldn't do this, thank you for worrying about me. I knew, though, the negative effects that this could have. But quite frankly, to me, the positive effects definitely overweighed it. The ability to be free. The ability to see myself for who I am. Like I do with others. Shit like that. Thank you for worrying about me, though. And you worrying about me will certainly not be forgotten love you guys. My friends are my heart, my soul, my fire, my flame. And I thank you for the strength you've given me over the years, the acceptance, the love that nobody else would. Um, thank you to my mother for putting through with my shit. Quite frankly, to put it bluntly, you had a lot of shit to go through. And you uh, one hell of a boss ass bitch for doing it. The amount of verbal abuse that we just Rudy fucking each other, mostly because I fucking started it, was, um, horrible. And thank you for sticking with me. Always wanting the best for me, even now, despite your physical condition, I always tell you to stop trying to help me. But I guess you're just like me, an empath at heart. I love you. If it wasn't for you, I don't know if I'd be half as loving and caring as I am today. You're an amazing person. And I think, I, I wish that every kid had a chance at a mother like you. <laughs> Maybe the world would be a lot better place if that was the case. Thanks, Mom. You're amazing. Every single part of you is. 
and you're amazing for the things you've helped me with. Thanks. I'm speechless at the things that you've forgiven me for, Mom. Thank you. And another thing that I need to come out on is that I forgot, due to the fact that coronavirus is uphold, that I'm currently in a legal battle with Zed Shea. If you remember from earlier, that is my father who abandoned me, biological father. Um. Who, by the way. He's in a legal battle with, with me currently. He took his son to court for child support because he's a lazy ass bitch. Who's in, even in debt when it comes to child support payments. Who's never fucking on with them, so. Quite frankly, I'm angry at him that he put my mom through all this shit without his fucking financial support. By leaving her alone. Fucking pathetic loser. If ever I have a kid, I will make sure to learn from this fucking mistake and never leave my child. It's fucking disgusting and deplorable what he did. is that during my life at one point in it I did go through a phase of extreme emotional numbness due to all the shit that I went through where in fact I wanted to not only just to the people out there who say well I want to feel like I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to feel anything I'm feeling so sad shut the fuck up shut the fuck up you anger me to no fucking degree because you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Because if that wish ever fucking came true, you would be begging on your fucking knees to feel like god awful shit once more. This feeling like nothing is the worst feeling of them all. It is the most painful thing. So don't ever come at me with this fucking bullshit. You'd love to feel numb. Shut the fuck up. You have no idea what it's like to be numb. So please, miss me with that shit. Genuinely.
not to say they won't have negative effects in the future, that's separate. But when it comes to the majority of manipulations of self doubt and all that, you don't have to look at There is one last thing I'm going to do. Because right now I'm just admittedly a coward talking about screen. Even if I don't really need to do a lot of socials, we do have our link in my account. We'll take you to places where you need information. Get my computer at me. guy behind the screen. The world will let be known there. Take full accountability for the things I've gone through in my life, and I'm a better person because of it. But the scars are there. I've never once cut myself. Stronger than that. I'm going to continue to fucking improve. I promise people I love and myself, my parents, and my friends, and my, ex my family, and my extended family that I call, you know, brothers, like Beast and all that. I love you guys. And it's for you. brain as fuck, but this has been my journey nonetheless. And before you question the reasoning for doing this, it was definitely for the emotional clarity, because nobody has a gun to my head, and quite frankly, this was of my own doing. After I've been through a lot, the past few days, I decided this is something I need. There's no reason for me to lie about any of this shit. I don't even feel like I need to say that. It's fucking obvious. But 